Hey, welcome back guys to my full hard mode speedrun slash walkthrough for Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth. So it should be here, chapter 10, and we're in the Cosmo Canyon region. To begin with, just gonna warp to the closest fast travel point to the objective marker. For me, it's gliding range number five. So I'm just gonna warp over there, then make way to the objective marker for a little cutscene. And the beginning and the end of this video, I just speed it up a slightly I've just doubled the speed on it just to save like five, 10 minutes and it's pretty much only story anyway. But you see what I'm doing, like I say, it'll just be a bit faster and I'll walk you through it anyway. But once you get in the dungeon, they'll all be at normal speed guys, boss fight, all that. Just the story bits at the start and the end because it take quite a long time. So as you come into a little settlement, Cosmo Canyon City, so follow Red 13, yeah, just take this path I'm taking and you have a little cutscene with him there by that tree. Carry on up here and you'll see him go up the elevator. So next we're gonna make our way over there. The elevator should come back down by the time you reach it and then we're gonna take it up. The objective markers are a little bit misleading in this area because they don't show you how to get to the elevator. So they just show you where the objective is. Not how to get up there. So once you get to the top, to carry on around the mountain. Pretty much only one path once you get up here. Just keep your heading up and you'll eventually find Red 13 talking to the professor. You're gonna follow them into the observatory. Now you're supposed to, it looks like you're supposed to interact with everything, but you don't. All you have to do is go all the way to the top, the very top room, go into the middle of the room and then come back down. Yeah, so this part here, go into the middle and then head back down and as you get back down to the middle floor, the objective will change and now you can listen to this planetary photograph thingy. Interact with that guys, be a little cutscene, the phonograph, and then follow the professor down here for another little cutscene. That's it, after that, come back up here and now go back down to the elevator. Yeah, this NPC will wanna show you the hidden stash, but it's not really anything of value inside. So I'm just gonna ignore it. You don't actually have to follow him. He just wants to take you to his little love nest. So yeah, just ignore him and carry on back down to the elevator and take it all the way back down. Like I say, this is at 200% speed, guys. It'll be slower once you get into the dungeon. Yeah, so once you get down here, no need to talk to anybody. Just go right and then this NPC, the camera will kind of zoom in on him. Yeah, follow him to the right. And he's gonna take to the kind of ceremony thing which is going on, the town meeting. Right, after that cutscene, we're gonna head back now to another elevator. Again, the objective don't quite show you where the elevator is. It just kind of tells you that you need to go many, many, many meters below where you are at the moment. So this is the elevator you want to use, the torch elevator. In the ceremony at the bottom, all you need to do is talk to any three of your party members. Talk to any three, then on the third one, Aerith will be able to be spoken to, and then you talk to her to progress the story. So yeah, like I say, talk to any of your three teammates. Tifa, Barrett, Red, or Barrett, Tifa, Red, or, or Yuffie, Red, Barrett. Don't matter guys, just any three of your teammates and on the third, yep, as you can see, Aerith will appear and she'll be open to talk with you now. So now talk with Aerith, another little cutscene. Yep, now we're gonna follow the professor again as he floats down on his levitator marble. Yes, follow him down on this levitation materia. And this is gonna begin the trial. So this trial is kinda of like the dungeon on this chapter. You've got one big boss fight, G Natic. Quite an annoying boss because he don't have a weakness. I've got quite a good strategy for him. The strategy's a little bit R and B but RNG based. But it will just work really, really well. Yeah, it works good. Just a little RNG based. But most time it does work. So yeah, you get down here guys to the sacred door. 
and you're going to undertake the trial say yes we are ready to begin and the game is going to restrict you to only red 13 and barrett in a second unfortunately yeah you got an annoying boss fight here mainly because of the characters you're stuck with you have to use red 13 and barrett so you can't really use any cheese tactics other than i guess using the god to dameron the thing with this boss he does a lot of debuffs and instant kill attacks, and some of them you can't avoid. You'll see for it soon enough. We'll be there shortly. So yeah, soon the dungeon is going to begin, guys, and the video speed will go back to normal. Yep, so we're going to let the trials begin. Like I say, you take control of Red 13 and Barrett. And all these enemies to begin with, they're all pretty much weak to fire. So you can avoid most of them. But on the Red 13, or Barrett, you want to put on them, of course, your normal sword. First strike, A to B boost. You have to kill these bunch to begin with. Yeah, you have to kill these. And of course, like I say, they're all pretty much weak to fire. Just try to have MP Absorb Link to fire, Magnify Link to fire, Magic Focus, and Swift Cast. So any fights you get stuck in, just straight away lob a magnified fire. That should pretty much kill them all. And of course, because you've got MP absorb on and swift cast, you'll cast it really quickly and also get all your MP back. Yeah, once killed them, so you're going to climb up this wall. Not that second one, just that first one. And you're going to make your way down here. And you can avoid these guys. Just stick to the left if you can. You've got to get the that tunnel behind them. Just take a wide path. That's it, hopefully you can avoid them. Carry on down here. There'll be some more enemies. They're kind of in the middle. So we're going to keep to the left. And we actually need to go to a rope and chew it. To make it release a door. So you want to drop down there and then jump up this ledge. And interrupt this rope, like I say, it'll make the door drop down. The massive tablet blocking it. Yeah, so just chew through it. And then try to get through there if you can without triggering the enemies. If you do, then just kill him quickly. Yeah, come through here. And then once you get in this room, you're going to go left. And you see that wall there, that's when we want to come down. So we're going to climb up here. Because this is the only wall which kind of takes you down after the enemies. All the others, once you climb down the wall, you still got to make your way past. But that will take you past the enemies, so you can kind of skip them. And they carry on downwards, and all these enemies blocking the archway at the bottom. If you're careful, you can kind of skip past them like so, without triggering the battle. But if you do trigger the battle, just kill them all with fire magnified. And then coming here, into this large kind of like puzzle room. It looks like one of them rooms where the ceiling's going to come down on you or something. But all you need to do here after the cutscene, is you need to pick up the little statue. And it's on the furthest ledge and hop furthest up ledge as well the one above the doorway we need to go through to progress so climb up here pick this g statue or the ancient relic it's called to begin with yeah once got that the red one drop all the way back down to the bottom and then head over to the middle and trigger a little cutscene and a little battle it's not a boss fire level three will pretty much get rid of this guy instantly just make sure you unmagnify it first yeah switch off the magnify so fire level three switch off the magnify that's it that's killed him quickly right so he's going to levitate down to you again on this levitation materia and you want to pick up that relic which you dropped so yeah make sure you pick up that relic guys that red statue and then carry on down here now you might get caught in a battle here or you might be able to get past them quickly if you just run straight past them Yep, just down here, sometimes get past, but obviously they're just blocking the exit for me. So I kind of got stuck in the battle. But you can quickly take these out with fire magnified. But if you do get caught in the battle, make sure you pick up the statue afterwards because you'll automatically drop it. Yes, yeah, so you won't be able to flee because you have to pick up the statue which will automatically drop if you get caught in a the battle. Then come down, place a red statue on the red pedestal. As you can see, the pink one is or pink or purple. It's already slotted. So yeah, got the red one and lob it on the left pedestal. 
if you didn't bring this down with you, you have to go all the way back up and get this. Yes, yeah, so that's a ruby statue. Next up, grab this yellow one, the amber, and then place that on the amber color pedestal. Now, one more to find. For this one, head down the steps just in front of the amber statue. Follow the path around, and at the end here, you'll find the emerald one, the green statue. On the way back, you will get triggered into a little battle. But with fire, you'll be able to get rid of the enemy really quickly by just lobbing one fire level 3 unmagnified and that pretty much kill him. Yeah, over here is that green emerald statue. So pick it up, head back across and be ready for a boss fight. Not a boss, it's just a geolancer. That's it. If that don't quite finish him off, just attack him a few more times or scratch him, and that should knock him out. So once you killed it, make sure you pick up the emerald statue and make your way back to Barrett. And then head back up the steps and place this on the green pedestal. And that should open the path ahead. Yeah, chapter 11 is quite a long one as well. Pretty much all the chapters now going through the going to the uh, towards the end of the game are going to be quite long. I mean, 14 is not too bad if you remember. But that one where you're going through that massive temple, that one does take a long time. So we're going to slowly follow him through here. And now we've got to open them massive gates by pulling the chains. Yeah, a lot of gimmicks in this level. Got the wall climbing, we got the G statues, got a chain you need to pull. Genatic's quite an annoying boss. So like I say he's got no weakness, he does a lot of doom attacks. He just want to attack on the second phase where he can do one of four or all four things at once. You can either half your MP, half your HP, slow down your A to B rate, which pretty much if he triggers that, you cannot get two A to B bars. Yeah, it's quite annoying and it's got, I forget what the other one is. So once you get here, let's carry on down the steps. Down here and try to keep right and you can kind of jump down here to avoid the enemies. Go through this archway, carry on down and then go right to reach the first gate. Yeah, you're going to pull the chain out guys and that should automatically lock open so you can head on through. And each time you go through one of these st uh, gates, you're going to get ambushed by three enemies, but fire level three should take care of all of them. If not, Barrett can finish them off. You can put elemental plus fire on Barrett if you want to, so this fire level three don't kill any of them. You just switch to Barrett, guys, and then quickly do an overcharge on them for mag uh, maximum fury with one A to B. Because they're weak to fire, obviously you'll do quite a bit of damage. Yeah, just like so, guys. Magnified fire will finish them off. And you want to jump down the steps on the left, come down here, you want to kill these enemies. Because otherwise, when you try to push chain, you're going to kind of be too close to the enemies at that point. Unless you just get lucky and they stay on the opposite corner to you. Yeah, you need pretty much a bit of space to pull this chain out. Yeah, that will reveal a bridge to head across. Yeah, so continue across here. And then keep right. Up here, climb this wall. So it will allow you to skip past these enemies. Try to keep left and hopefully you don't trigger them enemies. And then once you reach the second gate, you're going to pull this chain out and then you're going to lock it behind the little, looks like a little stick on the right. It looks like a catapult. We're going to stick this behind the stick here. That's it, to lock it into place. One more gate and just like before, when you go through the gate, you're going to get ambushed by three enemies. So again, fire level three magnified should kill them all. If not, switch to barracks and use an overcharge and a maximum fury with one HP gauge to finish them off. Once you're all dead, carry on up here. Try to keep right and you'll avoid all the enemies and you should reach this chain. Pull it out and it make a little bridge. Head across the bridge guys, climb the walls and we're getting very, very close to the boss fight. Yeah, problem this boss as well, because he's got no weakness, your magic doesn't do a lot of damage. 
So you slowly, you're slowly losing MP because you're not quite recurring everything back that you use. So you've got to really plan this one out. Otherwise, she's going to get pear shaped, going to run out of MP, you're going to get instant killed. Many things can go wrong here. So yeah, pull out that chain, jump on this bridge, climb up this wall to the right, pull out this chain, which will bring out the final bridge. Yeah, then you're going to jump back down, head across to the gate, and then before you pull out the chain near the gate, you need to go and pick up the little stick, the twig, and place it in the slot, so that you, when you pull out the chain, you can lock it into place. Yeah, so pick up the twig to begin with. There you go, slot it in there, and then pull out a chain, guys, and hook it on. Carry on out here, and as you can see, it looks like you don't get ambushed when you go through that third gate. But up here will be a bench and rest, ready for the boss fight, guys, and then we'll go through the materia and whatnot. This fight coming up will be genetic. Just as you get up the steps, there'll be a cutscene and it'll follow straight after. So go for our equipment. So obviously, we're locked into Red 13 and Barrett. And like I was saying earlier, this fight is a little RNG based. So Red 13's got a silver collar, set and bracer, and the got a Damarung. Materia, he's got magic focus linked to lightning. He's got magnify linked to empowerment. He's got time. He's got HP boost. He's got Gilgamesh in the summon. He's got first strike. Strength up. HP up. MP up. He's got Lightning linked to HP Absorb, and he's also got Lightning linked to MP Absorb. For weapon skills, he's got Attack Power plus 20, Magic Attack Power plus 20, Vengeance Guard Gauge Charge Rate up, and Vengeance Gauge Charge Rate up again. Now Barrett's got a Fafnir Rifle, Cetron Armlet, and the Enhanced Expeditionary Medal. For Materia, he's got Magic Focus linked to Fire. He's got Limit Siphon. He's also got Enemy Skill. A to B boost, he's got Phoenix Materia, he's got First Strike, he's got Magic up, he's got HP up, MP up, Fire linked to MP Absorb, and Fire linked to HP Absorb. He's got Enhanced Overcharge, Limit Break Damage plus 10%, Attack Power plus 20, and Attack Power plus 20 again. Like I say, this is a little bit random. Pretty much because what can happen, he can grab you, and if he grabs one of you, it can kind of mess it all up. But most of the time, this does work out, guys. Try to follow me as closely as possible. Right, so straight away to begin, you're controlling Red 13 to begin with. Barrett's going to use Limit Siphon on Red 13. Yep, so Barrett's going to use Limit Siphon on Red 13. And then Barrett's going to use Satellite Beam, basically Limit Break level 3 straight away. And at the same time, Red 13 is ready to block the first attack. Since you block the first attack, Red 13 is going to use Faith on everybody. Yep, then Red 13 is going to build a 1 HP gauge quickly, then use A to B boost, and then use Thunder level 3. And then you're going to switch to Barret. Barret's going to build a 1 A to B, and then use A to B boost, and then he's going to use Fire level 3 on the boss. Then you're going to switch back to Red 13, attack a little bit. And as soon as the boss becomes staggered, switch back to Barrett, and Barrett needs to build at one and a half A to B at least while he's staggered. Like so. Once you've done so, switch back to Red 13 and build at what A to B you can before the boss recovers from the stagger. And at this point, you should have done enough damage and knocked him straight into his second stage as soon as he comes out to stagger. So straight away, make sure you've got Red 13, you're controlling him. Hold square to do a spin in attack and to group them all up like so. Since you've got two full eight beasts, use the Stardust Stray. Stardust Stray, switch back to Barrett, wait for the Stardust Stray to go off, and then Barrett wants to use Maximum Fury. If you needed to attack while Red 13 was doing the Stardust Stray to build up to eight B, then you could have done so. And then try to finish them all off with Barrett before any of them get a chance to possess anything. Just try to make sure, as you kill the last one, make sure you've got one A to B. 
and straight away, as soon as the boss comes back on, you use synergy ability, which will give you three A to B slots for everybody. And that should change Barrett's one A to B into two. Then Barrett's going to use his fire level three on the boss. And then while he's using that, Red 13 is going to try to build up two A to B as well. And then he's going to use Thunder level three. Like so. Then switch back to Barrett. Boss should be pressured at this point. Back to Barrett, build up another 2 to b do fire level 3. Back to red 13, quickly build up another 2 to b guys. And as soon as the boss becomes staggered, red 13 is going to stop on the boss. And then Barrett, if you haven't got 4 limit break, can you use limit siphon on red 13? Which should give you enough. But if you've already got enough, by the time you've got your 4 limit break, the boss is stopped and he's staggered. Barrett's going to use his limit 3 limit break, the satellite beam. And while he's doing that, he's going to switch to red and try to build up 3A to B ready. And then once he's got 3A to B, switch back to Barrett after limit break is finished and then quickly build up another 3A to B. So at this point, the boss energy should become locked and should all have 3A to Bs remaining. And by this point, your A to B boost should be ready again. So as the boss starts the Doom Countdown, Barrett's going to cast Fire Level 3 and Red 13 is going to do Lightning Level 3. And then you're going to switch back to Barrett once you've done it. Use A to B boost to get two. He's going to do another fire level three. Then back to red 13. He's going to do A to B boost and you do thunder level three again. And that should finish him off, guys. There you go. Yeah, it's quite a lot to pay attention to there. But that pretty much always works for me. Unless it gets a bit random and sometimes you might not have killed all the schools in time. to start the second phase. Or if the boss grabs you and that can mess it all up as well. But yeah, that's a genetic boss fight, guys. So straight after, we're going to carry on up here, guys. And soon, I'm going to speed this up again. Because it's pretty much the story again now. And it's quite linear. You still have fight a few enemies. But as long as you've got fire, weakness on. Or like fire magnify like we had before. You'll get rid of them all pretty quickly. So as you come up here, you'll reunite with all your party. Yeah, I mean, you've got your party back as well. I mean, if you want to, you could put fire on one of your party members, like Cloud, for example. And another one, you could put Quake, like you'll see me do. But try try to always lead with the fire and then use a Quake for backup. I kind of did it in reverse. So I was doing Quake first and it kind of messed it up a bit. Yeah, you kind of want to start with fire. Magnified fire, obviously magic focus, MP absorb and swift cast. Start with that. And then Quake comes in as backup. But yeah, once you get to the boat, just jump on. As you can see, now I've speeded up a bit. So you come up here. There'll be a brief scene. And then you carry on a bit, further, a bit further up. And this is your first fight we get lobbed into. So as you can see, I started with Quake. It worked quite well here. Just make sure whoever's got Quake on, if you do use that, they've got A to B stagger on as well. So that when they stagger the enemies with Quake, it kind of builds up their A to B as well in the same, at the same time. So as you head on up, Yuffie's going to start to examine these massive totems. And nothing you can do, you have to let the dialogue play out. But afterwards, carry on up and you get lobbed into another battle. Again, it's just the G-Lancer types, so kind of weak to fire. So you can use Fire Level 3 and then Quake Level 3, of course, as well. We're almost at the end of the chapter, so don't worry too much about MP. I think there's three fights all together on this end bit. And then you're pretty much at the end of the chapter where you get all your HP and MP restored. So you have second totem. Follow Yuffie again afterwards. And I believe there's one more fight you're going to get lobbed into. This one's a little bit harder because the arena is a bit bigger. So what you'll find is sometimes the enemies might move away from each other too much. And one of them might avoid the magnified, the magnified spell. But this way it helps you use the fire to begin with. So yeah, use fire level 3 to begin with. I use quake level 3 here first. And I think that's what messed it up. There might even be 4 enemies here. That might be the problem. But if I had fire, if I had fire on one of my other teammates for backups, so there's 3 of us. That could have simplified that fight with a 4 of 1 still alive. So once you beat them all, carry on up guys. We're almost there. 
Yeah, so bear look cutscene up here. I'm gonna skip it. And afterwards head forward and this kind gentleman is kindly gonna escort you to the elevator. It's literally straight ahead, about 10 meters, but he's gonna show you the way, just make sure you don't get lost. You can never be too safe. And these parts are quite rough as well. You might get robbed or something. So yeah, he's basically there to escort you guys. And then you ride the elevator up. There'll be another brief scene and they can talk with one of the guides and he'll, he can warp you to the entrance. And then all we need to do guys is warp to the airstrip, get back in the airplane and take a flight to the next area. Yeah, it's a very, very long elevator ride this one. It pretty much takes you from bedrock all the way to the top of the world. Yeah, so once up here, like I say, another, another brief scene with a levitation material guy. And then talk to this guide, warp to the entrance, head forward for brief scene. Right, and then we're gonna walk back to the airstrip. There you go, Cosmo Canyon airstrip. Head back to the phone box. Call the pilot, who want 1,000 gil again. Actually, he only wants 300 this time. He's reducing his prices for you because you're such a nice customer. Yeah, once back in the Bronco, you can steer it a little bit, but I don't know why they even let you because it doesn't really do anything. And that's it, once you land guys, that'll be the end of the chapter. Chapter then done. Next up is 11, 12, 13 and 14. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on number 11.